In this video, I'm going to share some key tips on how to manage your team's performance so that you're getting the most out of them, fitting of a high performance culture. If you're new here, my name is Sadaf Sheikh and I come in every single week to talk about how to build and nurture a high performance culture. This video is part of a four part series around how to get started with building your high performance culture. If you haven't picked up the last three videos, then go ahead and watch. Links will be in the description below. But also if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do subscribe because this is just one of many four part series that I'm planning on doing over the course of this year. Now, tracking your team's performance really starts from day one. And so it, it's logical that we start from the onboarding process. Now, onboarding is the, is the way in which your employees get accustomed and acclimatized to your organization and learn everything that there is to learn so that they can perform in their jobs to, the, to their fullest potential. Now, the purpose of onboarding is to get your employees performing as quickly as possible. Possible. And so it makes sense that that whole plan of how you want to do that is set up before the employee ever starts. Now, this is crucial because it ensures that you know what resources you need to allocate to ensure that you're um, dedicating them to your employee. It also gives you a plan as to how quickly you can expect them to be fully uh, up to speed. I like my onboarding plans to start right from day one. So mapping out what activities your new employee can expect to be involved with in their first day. Now, one other mistake that often happens with onboarding is that managers will hold back and not give employees the full workload right when they start. Now, and so what happens with that is that you're waiting for the employee to really start to perform to their fullest. You can actually prevent that from happening by having a proper onboarding plan uh, and mapping out like at what increments you're gonna give them more work to do over the course of let's say the next month. Which leads me to my next point in that you have to set goals for your employees to ensure that they know what, they, what the expectations are of them even in the first few days of their new job. It's important that every employee in your company has objectives aligned to that, to those business objectives and to the vision and the mission of your company. And that they know, your new employees know what your core values are, which if you have been following along on this series, they would already know because you've been telling them throughout the recruitment process. Now, goal setting is something that a lot of small business CEOs miss. So they'll have goals for themselves, they'll have goals for the business, they may even have goals for their senior leadership team, but goals like specific quantifiable measurable goals do not normally cascade throughout the rest of the organizations. If you have not defined specific measurable goals for all of your employees, it's time to start doing that. Now you don't have to have long complicated forms to do this. A simple one pager is more than sufficient. I do not want you to go out and implement a whole performance management system or process. That's not necessary. As long as your employees and you or their direct manager, if it's not you, are on the same page about what the expectations are, that is more than sufficient. It could even be an email. Like I want Want this to be as easy as possible for you just as simple as saying okay these are the expectations this is when you need it done by this is what the measures are going to be do you understand yes i understand in another video in a future video i am going to talk about how to have that cascade from like business goals to ceo goals to the rest of the organization but for now let's just focus on getting every single employee specific goals that they can work towards um, by the end of this year once you've set goals for every single employee, then it's time to start thinking about how you're going to reward them for achieving those goals. So they have goals, they meet those goals, and you compensate them for those goals. Now this compensation, this reward that I'm talking about, is beyond the basic salary that you would be paying them. Salary you pay is for them to do the core job. If you want to see exceeding expectation performance from your employees, setting those goals is important, but then paying them to incent them to continue to perform is equally important. Now, as I mentioned, rewards doesn't have to be well, it's beyond salary, but it doesn't just have to be monetary. A lot of leaders will get fixated on like bonus numbers or something tangible like money-wise that they can give employees, but it doesn't just have to be that. It could be a whole number of things. And again, this goes back 
to understanding who and, and what motivates your ideal employee. And if you missed the video on where I talked about the ideal employee, it is up here. You can catch it. Link will be in the description below as well. Rewards are so much more than that. So as an example, um, and this is, this is a bit controversial. A lot of HR professionals don't talk about this, but let's say one employee wants to have more vacation time instead of a salary. Sometimes that's more important for people, like to have that time away from work where they can um, spend time with friends, friends or family or whatever, take care of their mental health, it doesn't matter. And they prefer that to getting a monetary bonus. Well, that's okay. So if you, if you're, if you're exchanging that monetary bonus in lieu of say vacation time or time off, some kind of paid time off, you don't have to call it vacation, um, that's okay. Whatever works for the employee and for you as a company, like think beyond just the basics. Once you start to reward your employees with the things that they truly value and not just like a customary, um, you know, cursory, thing that you're giving them that is a blanket reward for everybody who meets expectations, you'll really start to see how they outperform and overperform. And those employees that you bring in that you've worked so hard to select and attract into your world will continue to keep delivering day after day, year after year. I go into a lot more detail around tracking employee performance in my signature program, High Performance Culture Academy. It is specifically for CEOs of small businesses who are overworked, who are stressed, and who want to get their energy and excitement back by having this wonderful, amazing team of people who over delivers every single day. If you want to be part of that program, then click on the link below to schedule a call with us and let's see if it's the right fit. Now I want to hear from you. What do you use to track your employees' performance? Like what are some of the mechanisms that you've put in place to ensure that your employees are exceeding expectations every single day, delivering every single day and really showing up and being engaged? I want to know. Comment below and share. If you like this video, then please make sure you hit the like button below. It just shares it with a whole bunch of other people on YouTube so more leaders can see this, this content. And if you haven't subscribed, of course, subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share this video with your colleagues. And also check out these videos here just to get caught up on this four part series. If you haven't been uh, keeping up, uh, I think it's definitely worth a watch. Come back same time, same place next week and we'll talk some more.